uh, you know, in terms of um, the excitement, in terms of in terms of play, in terms of the team desire to actually watch away, in terms of drama, you know, which Nollywood film do you want to watch? Let's go with this at this platform. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome. Um, another special episode of the Niger FC podcast. Thank you very much for joining us. As always, I'm your host, IoT. And with me, I have my co-host. Like, thanks for joining. Yes. Um, another episode, another interesting one. Um, we have, you know, very interesting topic to talk about. The AFCON is giving everything that it is supposed to give. We have late goals. We have penalties, late penalties scored, late penalties missed. We have big wins. We have narrow wins. We have red cards. You know, we have upsets. It's, it's, it's just giving everything that it's supposed to give. You know, like we've talked about this off camera and I've said, for me, I think this is the best tournament that I've, that I've watched. You know, um, the only competition that's right now that I can put on the same level as AFCON is World Cup. Now only yes. World Cup, they did that kind of level. Euros mm-hmm. does not give this. You know, Asia Cup does not give this. CONCACAF, um, this thing does not give this. You know, Comet Ball does not give this. Copa yes. America, whatever competition. This AFCON has been so incredible. Before we get into the round of 16, you know, recap and review, because that's kind of the main thing that we have for you guys today. Smidlai, I'll just ask you, you know, overall, this competition, where do you rank it amongst the, the Afcons that you've watched? For me, um, this Afcon is actually what the best uh, Afcon I've ever seen. I'm pretty sure about that. This Afcon is the best mm. because uh, you know, in terms of um, the excitement, in terms of in terms of play, in terms of the team desire to actually watch away, in terms of drama, you know. Which Nollywood film do you want to watch? Let's go with this at this platform. You know, so I don't want to compare this. Um, I don't want to compare this to some to some things, but I can tell you this Afcon will go down as um, probably the best in history. Mm. No, and I mean me, I'm young. You know, I've only I think the first Afcon I watched. I'm trying to think. You know, the first Afcon that I can probably remember watching. I don't know, maybe. I'm trying to think. Primary school, I watched, but I cannot really remember because I was a kid, you know. Mm-hmm. So maybe 2000 and 2006. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Trying to think. That's probably the first time that I can really recall because I know yeah. then, you know, I was just about to. Hey, I'm not going to talk too much. Let people on this um on this video not gonna age me. But you know, I was I was young then. That's the first one that I, I think I can remember watching vividly. Mm-hmm. And I think this is also the best Afcon I've watched. You know, even I watch yeah. Euros, I watch all the Copa America, everything. This tournament is is beating all of that. You know, fantastic yeah. tournament so far. Um, in case you've been sleeping under a rock, we'll just give you a recap of everything that has happened. Or in case you've been too busy to watch games, you know, we'll let you know how things went. And of course, we'll look back at our predictions because. You know, in the beginning, my predictions were going well, but then some people decided to let me down. Smith Lai is on in the beginning, some people let him down. Then at the end, they justified, <laughs> they justified him at the end. Um, so we'll talk about all of that. But yes, mm-hmm. of course, we just saw the conclusion of the round of 16 stage. For context, for anybody watching or listening, we are recording this podcast on Tuesday, January 30th. So we just watched the final game of the round of 16. And let's go through the games one by one. We'll give you our thoughts and we'll, you know, of course, look at whether or not we predicted it correctly. Okay. The first game of the round of 16, uh, this tournament, was Angola versus Namibia. The Black Antelopes of Angola, you know, after finishing top of that group, faced Namibia, who, you know, managed to qualify for the round of 16. And I think in this one, Angola showed their quality. Angola showed their dominance. Despite going one man down in the 17th minute, they still went on to take the lead from um, through girls in Dala. You know, eventually Namibia also went to Naga and get the iron red card. At that point, I kind of just knew that, yeah, Angola are just going to win this easily. Because if they are already scoring you, in fact, I already expected them to beat you before the game started. They scored you when they had one man down. It's now 10 against 10. They ran Namibia off the park. The game eventually ended 3-0. And 
a special, special goal was scored by Mabululu. You know, I've watched that goal about 10 times since he scored it. And I'm just like, that's not normal finesse that everybody just does. The quality of that strike, you know, fantastic goal. Um, not to compare to Nigeria, who, you know, is facing them next, but that goal is better than all the goals we've scored in this tournament. <laughs> you know, so <laughs> it, was, it was just very interesting to watch. They're definitely a quality side. You know, they had less possession of the ball in that game, but, you know, they still showed that they were the much better team. You know, you have to give credit to Namibia. They fought hard, you know, but at the end of the day, the cream always rises to the top, you know, level past level, and Angola just showed them that they're a different level. Um, so, Smidlai, what do you think of that Angola versus Namibia match? You know, it was uh, one of the worst that they gave in the second round. I, I, I don't think, uh, you know, I, I thought the brave warriors should be brave enough to hunt down the antelope. But unfortunately, the, the, you know, they don't have enough power, you know. Right from the first minute, there was difference in class between Angola and the Brave Warriors. So, you know, the outcome did not really surprise me at all. You know, it would be more than four, more than three, three goals. Mm. So I'm not really surprised about that. Yeah. Um, and for that one, you know, we'll start. I predicted Angola to win. So one for me there, Smidlai predicted Namibia to win. So yeah. no points there. Um, okay. We'll move on to the second game of the round of 16. We saw. Nigeria, the Super Eagles of Nigeria, take on the indomitable Lions of Cameroon. I mean, mm. this one, um, another interesting, dogged, rugged, hard-fought battle like we expected it to be. You know, mm. Nigeria versus Cameroon was never going to be a, a game that both teams would just come and be passive. Every minute of the game, the players were fighting. You know, um, Victor Osime such an effort, you know, running for 90 minutes, putting pressure on the defenders. You know, it was another game that the Super Eagles did not go out to play expansive football. At this point, we're not expecting it anymore. We've heard the coach say it many times that, see, what matters to him is get the win and don't concede goals. It doesn't matter if it's half goal, if it's one goal, if it's two goals. His own is that don't concede goals and get the win. So, it was a well-coordinated, well-organized Super Eagles side, you know, and they got the job done. The first goal was scored by the Mona Lukman. You know, after Osimhen's fantastic pressing work, Osimhen laid the ball off to him in a moment where many strikers in the world would have probably thought of taking the shot. But Osimhen had the wherewithal, you know, he had the um, concentration to actually see Ademola Lukman running on his right hand side and then slipping a nice ball to him. Lukman did not really catch that shot properly. You know, a better goalkeeper might have saved it, but. Glory be to God, you know, for the sake of the Nigerian fans, um, Ondua was not really good, you know. I had said it during my live watch along from like the fifth minute of the game that I said, this Ondua will make mistakes. And he didn't really do well on that shot and the ball crept underneath him to make it 1-0. And then, of course, in the 90th minute, you know, when the game was winding down, a nice ball from Alex Wobi to Calvin Bassi. Calvin Bassi played a cross into the box and then Ademola Lukman again got the finishing touch. Another one that some people will say Ondua should have saved. But to the glory of Nigeria, you know, to the glory of God, he didn't save it. And we came out to new victors in that game. Um, as we both predicted, Nigeria won the match. Nigeria threw to the quarterfinal to face Angola. Um, but Smitlai, what did you think of the Nigeria versus Cameroon match? You know, uh, like, you know, we both think that uh, this Cameroon team is a very poor team. You know, in fact, this one of the worst Cameroonian team in history. You know, I don't know, maybe they're even Cameroonians. So, but um, I know they're going to get rolled over. But uh, yeah. I think we did the, like a typical knockout job. You don't need to yeah. be too extravagant. You don't need to be too um, dominating possession too much. Just do the job. You know, I think we did it too. They lack quality. They didn't threaten us. We're just, you know, controlling the game and um, we got the job done. So, so I just think that um, I, I expect that you have to progress, you know. But I expect like a normal, a tighter game compared to how the yeah. progress will have even one more than that because if you consider the the layoff to a line you know, and the <laughs> layoff to a line would have been three zero or four zero at some stage but you know kudos to the Eagles I think it was also a one sided game but a slightly closer than the Namibia Angola game. Mm. And you know it's funny that you say you're not sure they're not Cameroonians because in one of my group chats with my friends there are two mm. Cameroonians in that in that group. And one of them, during the match, we were laughing at him as the match was about to end. The guy said, 
Honestly, even myself, I'm not sure these people are Cameroonian. He said our defender's name is Gonzalez. He said that in his life he has not met any Gonzalez that's from Cameroon. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. I said uh, even the Cameroonians yeah. are denying their people now, you know. But at the end of the day, the Super Eagles got the results. You know, we're happy. Cameroon, yeah. they go home. They can go and make steel with their pepper. Um, but yeah. to, the, to, to the glory of Nigeria, um, we're through to mm-hmm. the quarterfinals. And, of course, we'll take on Angola. Um, okay, the next mm-hmm. game in round of 16, um, we saw Equatorial Guinea go up against Guinea. You know, the battle of the Guineas in this one. Equatorial Guinea... Yeah. After finishing top of their group, Group A, that featured Nigeria, the host nation, Ivory Coast, you know, a lot of people had high expectations for them. In Sway scored five goals in, qualif- in qualifying from the group. They were on a roll. You know, they were, they were doing everything that you thought they needed to do. But unfortunately for them, they were undone by a 98-minute goal from Mohamed Bayer. I mean, mm-hmm. Equatorial Guinea in that game as well had missed a penalty. Um, Emilio in Sway, their top goal scorer, hit the woodwork from his penalty. And of course, they got a man sent off in the 55th minute. You know, for, for me, this one, I kind of expected this to happen. You know, even though it was a narrow win, I didn't expect it to be a big win, but I had predicted that Guinea will win. And I think the key thing that I, that I said was I felt like they would get there and the stage would just be too bright for them. And I feel like that's what happened on the day. You know, you concede a. Um, you can see the red card, you are down to one man, and then you end up getting a penalty. And in Sue, who was the highest goal scorer in the tournament, who everybody would have felt, oh, there's absolutely no way that he's going to miss. You know, he has all the confidence in the world to go and miss a penalty like that. I just felt that the moments got to them. You know, they've always qualified from their group, but they've not been able to ever go far. And they probably felt the pressure, you know, of that they've put on themselves after a fantastic group stage performance. And unfortunately, they just couldn't see it over the line. And then, of course, in the 98 minutes, Bayo scores and Guinea go through to the quarterfinal. What did you think of the game, Smitler? So, well, and, um, like you actually were saying, they get the goal stage, maybe a straight fright or so. I don't know. They, you know initially, initially, I thought that uh, they did well. But, you know, after that red card, if you remember in the first game, that same guy committed a foul on Adelman He was mm-hmm. meant to be sent off. In that first game, <laughs> but uh, he still did the same thing. I know that uh, this guy is going to be in trouble. So I just think that um, they should not be disappointed with what they did. They should be proud of what they did. But the game, you always know that Guinea always have that game. You know, if the game went to extra time, Guinea will still win before they mm. say, You know that uh, Guinea had their game in their hands. So, um, Ecuador Guinea should go back home and prepare for the World Cup qualifiers. But they should go with their head as I, you know, they did well. We need two games yeah. in that form. It's not easy. Yeah, and I mean, they definitely have a good chance of qualifying for the World Cup so they can look yeah. into the future brightly. Yes. Um, I had predicted Guinea to win. Smith Lye had predicted Equatorial Guinea to win. So, two for me at the moment, one for Smith Lye. Um, The next game was Egypt against DR Congo. The Pharaohs, you know, almighty Egypt, scaled through their group with three draws, you know, not so impressive. Yeah. And I think going into this game against DR Congo, I did not expect it to be an easy match for either side. But mm-hmm. like we both called it, a salaless Egypt, you know, I just did not really see them going past their Congo. Ultimately, the game ended 1-1 in 90 minutes. They went to extra time, you know, and then eventually got to penalties. And that is where Mustafa Mohamed, you know, who had scored the penalty already in the 90 minutes, unfortunately missed. And it was a very intense penalty shootout battle. You know, after that, everybody was scoring, scoring, scoring. And then, unfortunately, he went to the goalkeeper, Gabaski. And then, you know, he missed his, he missed his penalty. And then the um, DR Congo goalkeeper, Impasi, stepped up. And, you know, as I was about to take that penalty, they showed his, they zoomed in on his face and you just see him smiling. He just knew that. Mm-hmm. In his mind, I'm sure he just knew that. I'm about to send these people home. You know, and then Mpasi yeah. scored his own penalty. DR Congo win mm-hmm. on you know, penalty shootouts. If a fantastic mm-hmm. game. I quite enjoyed watching that match. Um, and I'm happy mm-hmm. for DR Congo because I think that they've been working really hard, you know, and for them to reach this stage is, is a good fit mm-hmm. for them. What do you think of the match? Yeah, the match was a very close game, like I would predict it, but um, the quality in the Egyptian attack wasn't there at all, you know. Salah's Egypt will always struggle. 
and you know one thing that adds salt to their injury was um, their midfielder was doing backflip in training and he got injured <laughs> so in being <laughs> i don't know why <laughs> so he got injured and he couldn't actually what to make that team so We've seen best players miss penalty. We've seen Robert Bajo in 1994 miss penalty. I know. We've seen Mustafa Mohamed should just add his head up, you know, high. And uh, I think, but this Egypt team, oh, I think they need a lot of uh, rejiggling for them to come back stronger. It's yeah. like, a, you know, they're like going on a downward trend compared to what they did in the last half, I can tell you. Yeah. And don't forget that they, they failed to qualify for the World Cup too. So I, I think that uh, Diar Congo is the winner in this situation. Like, you know, yeah. they have a very young team blend home based uh, or what's called homegrown and abroad uh, foreign born blend together in passes in passes the, the goalkeeper born in France you know we have the Agana we have Wiza you know all of them you have uh, the Kambu all of them blend together so I, I, I think they are doing something so their next game against Guinea will be very interesting but you know very good game but like I said Congo Congo never win any game for this uh, Africa. draw that's all draw four draws <laughs> yeah, but at least they they've, yeah, they've yeah, come this fair. far, so you know you never know what can continue to happen. Um, for this one, we both predicted that DR Congo would beat Egypt, so we both got this one right. You know, even though Egypt were heavy favorites according to bookmakers and in the minds of a lot of people, you know. So kudos mm-hmm. to us on that upset prediction. Um, four for me so far through the first four matches, and then two for Smith Lai. Uh, moving on to the next match, we had Cape Verde. Going up against Mauritania, um, mm-hmm. Mauritania, you know, beats. Um, wait, sorry. Yeah, that was the next game. Mauritania qualified from their group, you know, beat Algeria in that final match of Group D, and then getting to this knockout stage, you know, on a very good momentum, you know, spirits high, everybody expecting to be able to put in a quality result, mm-hmm. and then the audience on the other mm-hmm. side, we had Cape Verde, who were my pre-tournament. Surprise package. I had predicted them as my surprise package. You know, also did well to qualify from their group, not losing in the group stage, beating Ghana, beating Mozambique, and then drawing 2 2 against Egypt. You know, going up against Mauritania, I kind of just felt like Cape Verde would always have the edge in this one. You know, it was not a very easy game. In fact, it was a late penalty that sent Cape Verde through to the quarterfinal. You know, they won the game 1 0. But at the end of the day, it didn't surprise me too much. Even though it came down to a late penalty, I think Cape Verde were clearly the better side through the 90 minutes of the game. You know, they had far more shots. They had more shots to target. They had more ball possession. You know, yeah. they, they had more set pieces. They, they just could not find the back of the net, you know, through direct or through open play. And, you know, as fortune will have it for them, late in the game, they won a penalty and then Ryan Mendes stepped up, scored it. 1-0 to Cape Verde. I think Mauritania, they have to be proud of themselves. You know, they're not a very big nation. This is their first time getting this final tournament. And they should just look, you know, within and see how they can continue to work on their project and to improve because there's another AFCON coming up in just just over a year, you know. So a lot can be done. Maybe they can even go further this the next time, but they have to be proud of themselves. Ultimately, Cape Verde are through to the quarterfinals. Um, and yeah, Good one for for both teams, I think. Um, Smiley, what do you think of this match? You know, like uh, uh, I will, I'll be honest with you, the Mauritanian guys that they give they give their their all in that game, and um, you know, if not because of inexperience too, the one or two chances fell their way because of the game. But poor finishing, you know, like uh, there was a game that uh, there was one that the coach opened his mouth, they could not even close it. Like mm. so. A very glaring opportunity it was a very beautiful run from the midfield. It, it, it's like it, it drove through those um, Kevadian defenders. So that even showed me that uh, Kevadian, you know, they are weak in some areas. But that penalty was a moment of madness. What was he looking at? What was he thinking? <laughs> what, what was the defender thinking? I was like, you know, and that's what it takes to, you know, all these smaller nations to, when they give it their all, all this mental tiredness gets into it. Mm. They make mistake, they're out. I think that guy will not be popular in their country, and I'm pretty sure about that. <laughs> yeah. Um, and for this one, um, I believe we both predicted Kebrede to win this match. Yeah. You know, we knew it to be it to be tight, but we mm-hmm. both predicted Kebrede to win. So as of mm-hmm. this point, five uh, predictions right for me, and then three for Smith Lai. And then in the next match, 
we had champions, defending champions, Senegal, mm-hmm. the Ranga Lions, going up against the host nation, Côte d'Ivoire. Côte d'Ivoire, Ivory Coast, just managed to qualify for the round of 16 after finishing third in Group A behind mm-hmm. Equatorial Guinea and Nigeria. They finished as the fourth third um, fourth best third place team. So they literally just managed to go over the line and to qualify. Mm-hmm. And then coming up against the host nation, rather well, the defending champions, boy, they showed us a different side entirely. As mm-hmm. we can remember, they sacked their coach, you know, after the group stage, despite qualifying for the um, round of 16. In fact, they did not even wait to see if they would qualify or not. Once they lost that game against Victoria Guinea, they sacked the coach. They said he can't be going home. They had mm-hmm. asked the French FA to borrow them, have Renard, who is the coach of the um, French women's national team. This was the first time that I'm seeing in football that you can ask somebody to borrow their coach. But <laughs> ultimately, the French FA said, no, it's not happening. You know, mm-hmm. And then they got their assistant to work as an interim. And, mm-hmm. you know, sometimes people think that new manager bounce is not a thing. But mm-hmm. I think that's exactly what Ivory Coast showed. They showed a new spirit. They showed a new level of determination. They showed a new fight. And they mm-hmm. took the game to Senegal. You know, mm-hmm. they took the game to Senegal. They considered an early goal. Habib Diallo scored in the third or fourth minute of the match. Um, mm-hmm. You know, slow start to the game. But after that, I think it was just complete dominance from yeah. Ivory Coast. Chance after chance after chance. You know, they had possession. They were just knocking on the door. At a point, you know, it was one new for a long time. Yeah. And I was looking at, okay, Senegal, you know, in most matches, they just go there. They play fancy football. They dominate. But I was about to give them credit and say they are showing that they can be resilient as well. That when they're under the coach, you know, when they're under pressure, they can actually hold their own and defend well. But as God will have it, Edward Mendy did what, you know, a lot of Chelsea fans have seen in the past. Clumsy mistake, you know, just bad decision in the moment. And he considered a foul, a penalty, um, after taking down Nicolas Pepe, the former Arsenal man. And then Frank Kessie, after coming off the bench just a few minutes before, you know, was the super sub. We've seen Kessie take penalties for AC Milan, for Barcelona. So we know he has the quality. And then he converts. 1-1, we go to extra time, end up going to penalties. And then Ivory Coast get the win and the penalty shootout. A fantastic match. Defending champions going out. Post Nation going through to the quarterfinals. Smith, like, what did you think of this Senegal versus Ivory Coast match? So, you know, like, um, it's, you know, I, I think Senegal mismanaged that game because um, they had the game in their hands after the first goal. We lost quite the second. But, you know, it's like you want to kill someone. You know, Ivory Coast, you know, you can't just... There's this something called the national, what's it called? The new manager bands. There's something they want to do in this game. So, and, you know, I wasn't surprised that they took out um, Senegal because I knew that uh, a lot of people see Senegal as the best team in this outcome, but I don't see Senegal as the best team. I knew that um, they have deficiencies, you know, in their forward play. I know they have their problems. But, yeah. you know, I'm not surprised. Ivory Coast actually was won. I think Ivory Coast have won regulation time, but, you know, Kudos to Africa for a very job well done. But I think, uh, as you see, it's a learning curve for him again now because he's trying to change the team that won the AFCON two years ago. So mm-hmm. now it's a learning curve for him to try and rebuild the team again and see if they can actually challenge for the for the title next year. So kudos to the guys from Ivory Coast and kudos to Emery Fai. You know, Fai is their former international. You know, he played at the 2006 World Cup, you know, with Dragwa and Go. So yeah. fantastic player, a right winger. I remember. Then he was also involved in the game against Nigeria in the semi final in 2006. So, you know, fantastic guy. He has never coached the senior team before. He's been working with the underage. But I think the, exper- the experience we, we can't, we still can't, the experience we, we, you know, might be shortcoming when the Afghan get to like later stages. Mm. And, you know, before we finish up on this Ivory Coast um, Senegal match, you know, the interesting thing now is that the defending champions are out of the AFCON again in the yeah. round of 16. What mm-hmm. do you think it is about the AFCON that if you win the trophy now, you just know, say, okay, next one on now mess up. You know, so Nigeria, if we should win this AFCON, we just know that, okay, 2025, we know they expect, <laughs> you know, they expected it to be again. You know, what, what, is, what is it with the AFCON that defending champions just don't do well the next one? I, I, I just think that um, sometimes, you know, African football 
African coaches, they are very, very smart. Maybe they realize that they have played the cards and they have played all their cards. And when they are coming, they know what to actually what to do. For example, now, like um, the um, the Ecuador Guinea coach said, Oh, they have studied Algeria, what they did in 2019. So they are ready for them already in 2021. Oh. And that showed in their play. So, and um, that's, that's actually what showed in their play. And I'm really actually was surprised even that Algeria could not reinvent their method in this year's, um, this year's AFCON. Yeah. So, it's like the study. For example, don't be surprised. If we win this AFCON with our 343 formation, you will see the order of the day, the next AFCON is going to be 343 formation. <laughs> 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 no, but it's, it's, it's definitely an interesting thing, you know. Yeah. Um, of course, it doesn't mean you always still want to win, but the way it's going, if we win this one, it does not say next mm-hmm. one. You know, just mm-hmm. make round of 16, you accept it and you, you go home. Um, mm-hmm. But yes, I had predicted Senegal to win. Smitlai had predicted um, Ivory Coast to do the upsets and knock out the defending champions. So as of this point, I believe it was, um, let me see, how many had I got? I had five, um, as Smitlai now has four, I believe, yeah. as of this point. Mm-hmm. Um, the next game, we had Mali, wait, is it five? For. Yeah. Okay, the next game we had Mali against Burkina Faso. Mm-hmm. Mali and Burkina Faso, you know, we had spoken about this one about how it was going to be a KG affair, how it would mm-hmm. be a tight game. You know, another interesting match. Uh, Mali took the lead in the third minute at Montapsoba with an own goal, unfortunately. Um, that is Boniface's guy, you know. But mm-hmm. unfortunately for him, he considered an own goal in the third minute of the game. So from there, he kind of put Burkina Faso already at the disadvantage. Mali are normally a good side. So if they can score you early, you know they are going to t- take control of the match. And then just after halftime, Sinayoko scored the second goal for Mali, 2-0. And then Bertrand Traore does what he has been doing for Burkina Faso, scores from the spots to make it 2-1. And then unfortunately, you know, Burkina Faso tried and tried and tried. They had quite a number of counter-attacks. They had a few breaks that he could have taken advantage of. But in the end, it wasn't meant to be. And they fell 2-1 against Mali. I think the only thing that really surprised me about this game was there were, I have to say, there were more chances than I was expecting in this match. Because actually watching the game, you know, at a point, the game kind of opened up and they were even playing a little bit of end-to-end football and they were going back and forth. You know, Burkina Faso will, will try to score, Mali will hit them on the counter-attack, Burkina Faso will get the ball back and try to counter again. So it was quite, you know, an interesting game, more interesting than I thought it would be. But the results did not surprise me at the end of the day. Mali, just slightly, I think, better than Burkina Faso on the night. And then they went out, in my opinion, deserved, you know, two new winners. So, like, what do you think of this game, Mali, Burkina Faso? No, no, we, like, during our preview, we predicted this game to be a very close game. And um, I think it was in Farrow. Because don't forget that they just called the collider that was rolled out to, I would say, yeah, we go again. But, um, you know, like, the class of Mali showed through the game and that she was progress. Though we would predict that Mali would actually would go through, but they with themselves we know that this no this wasn't an easy game for them. So yeah. the games give us every coast <laughs> expect fireworks. Mm. And yeah, yeah so, um, we both predicted this one right. So as of yeah. this point, I have six and Smithlai has five correct. Yes. And then going into the final game of the round of sixteen, we have the highest ranked nation. The semi finalists of the FIFA World Cup, Morocco, going up against Bafana Bafana, South Africa. Um, before the tournament, Mitlai had picked Bafana Bafana to be yeah. his surprise package of the team. Um, yeah. I remember you said they would go as far as the quarter final, and mm-hmm, yeah. they, they proved you right in, in this one. You know, South mm-hmm. Africa defeating Morocco 2 0. Personally, was a result that I did not see coming. I thought that if yeah. South Africa is going to win this match, in my mind, I was thinking maybe they can do it in penalties, you know. And But unfortunately, yeah. Morocco just did not bring their A game to today's match. I think Morocco were slightly unlucky. They had control in many parts of the, of the match, but they just did not show that class up front. You know, yeah. their players did not really come and assert themselves. And Nesiri, and Nesiri forgive me for the pronunciation, had a yeah. few opportunities that he just did not take. Hakimi was not as involved in the game as I would have expected to, to see and for him to really impose himself. Unai 
was probably their most creative player, was their most inventive player throughout the match, you know. And I feel like the referee denied Morocco a penalty shout that I felt was a valid penalty um, early in the match. But eventually, we cannot use that as an excuse for them because eventually they got their penalty. They yes. got their chance for a handball. Only God knows what the South African guy was doing. His two hands were in the air. The ball hit one of them, <laughs> you know, and they gave the penalty. And then, of course, big moments, you expect big players to step up. PSG yeah. defender Hakimi steps up to the penalty spot. And, you know, he was probably just thinking, this is a pressure moment. Let me not try to do anything too fancy. Let me just smash it down the middle. That's probably what he was thinking. And yes. then, unfortunately, his attempt to smash it, he smashed it against the crossbar and they missed. And, you know, they are still fighting, still trying to see what they can do in the game. And then Manchester United midfielder Amrabat goes and concedes a foul in the 94th minute and mm-hmm. then gets a red card. The funny thing was, they first of all gave him second yellow. Yes. He was already <laughs> upset. He was walking up the field. VAR now say, ah, referee, yeah, come and check. I was thinking that, ah, is it that it was not a foul and referee is going to cancel the red card? Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but they, they went, they canceled the second yellow. They turned it to straight red card. <laughs> So I was just like, that was so funny to me. Like, why does why not just allow him to be going? They said, no, he's not a second yellow, he's straight red. Still that's get a, off the field. That's I've come for you. <laughs> so that was funny to me. And then as you would have it, you know, Mokena of South Africa in the 95th minute scores a fantastic free kick, you know, set piece, wonderful strike. And mm-hmm. South Africa, two new winners. From that point, you know. Walid Regragi and his team, you could just tell that, yeah, they knew nothing was going to happen again. They're not going to score two goals. In, you know, there were still like six minutes of stoppage time, but they were not going to score two goals. Their spirit had gone down. They were one man down. South Africa just had to defend for the last few minutes of the game. I think it was a very interesting battle in the end. And, you know, another one of the favorites. In fact, Morocco were odds favorites to win this tournament because they were the semi-finalists at the World Cup and everyone was expecting. But kudos to Bafana, Bafana South Africa. You know, a fantastic result for them. Smithlai, what do you think of this match? So, you know, um, like I told you, that um, the South Africans have mastered the way of playing against North Africa. Mm. That's what they said. said. North Africa is not their problem. It's mm. how to play against the West Africans. Because they run, they don't get tired. Was this, this South Africa, I said that no matter if Morocco is coming with fire, South Africa will quench that fire. Hmm. And um, you know, and I wasn't actually was surprised by the results. You know, when I saw the whole thing, we were playing first half zero zero. I knew that uh, I knew that um, what's it called when they were playing and the whole thing was happening. I knew that uh, what's it called. It's going to get to a state that the game becomes free for all. That Sarka will got to capitalize. And this is the same thing they did against Egypt in 2019. If mm. this Africa faced Morocco again in the come in the yeah, front of that crowd. They would do the same thing again to them. So, yeah. so Morocco needs to go. It's fine. I said that uh, this is the worst draw for Morocco. Morocco. If yeah. Morocco had Ivory Coast, that'd be easier for them. If yeah. Morocco had other teams, that'd be easier for them. But this is the worst draw for Morocco. South Africa. I knew that it's going to be very hard for them to beat South Africa. So yeah. I wasn't surprised that Yashu was went that way. Though they were so, so unlucky for that penalty. But even if they scored that penalty, I think that South Africa will still win the game. Mm. <laughs> I just think South Africa was in the game. So kudos oh, to South yeah. Africa. Well done. Kudos to South Africa for sure. You know, and I give you your credit. You know, you called this one, even though I did not see it happening. Um, and I have to, I have to raise my hands up. Yeah, and I apologize to all the South Africans that watch or listen to this podcast because even before the tournament started, I've been talking down on South Africa. I've been saying that I did not expect much from them, and frankly, they've surprised me. They've they've truly proven to be a surprise package. So. I apologize to all my South African brothers and sisters for doubting your team. You know, kudos to you guys going into the quarterfinal. Um, Smilai got that one right. So yeah. making it six, I got that one wrong. So we ended up 6-6 six, six in a round of 16 predictions. So tie yeah. game. Uh, but I think we have to give ourselves credit. It's not easy to predict AFCON. We've seen it. Yeah. And for us mm-hmm. to get six out of eight right, I think yeah. it deserves a little bit of credit, you know. Yes, so, yes. good job, Smidlai. Good job, IoT. Yes. Um, yes. The, other, the only thing, or maybe one thing to note, is that all the North African sides have now been knocked out 
of this AFCON tournament. You know, mm-hmm. it's it's a little bit unfortunate for them. North Africa is, you know, a zone that we tend to believe, oh, they have quality sides, they play fantastic football. We know they have the resources, they have the facilities. But unfortunately, Tunisia disappointed, Egypt disappointed, and Morocco now as well disappointed. Um, it will be interesting to see how they bounce back in the next tournament that is going to be held in their own region, you know, um, in Morocco. And the teams that have qualified for the quarterfinal, in the first match, we have Nigeria going up against Angola. In the second match, we have DR Congo going up against Guinea. In the third match, we have Mali going up against host nation Cote d'Ivoire. And in the fourth match, we have Cape Verde going up against South Africa. Smith, like, let's do our quarterfinal predictions quickly now. Nigeria versus Angola. Super Eagles against Black Antelopes. So, do you want to go first or should I go first? You can go first. Okay. Um, for me, I'm going to stick with my boys. Um, before the tournament started, I predicted that we'll get to the semi-final and we'll finish third. You know, I, I'm tempted to change, but I don't want to get ahead of myself yet. But for this one, I'm definitely going to stick with them getting to the semi-final. I think Angola a quality side. I have to give them their, their kudos. I have to give them their credit. I think they play a fantastic game. They have some good players on their team. They have a good team chemistry. But the way the Super Eagles are playing compact, the way the Super Eagles are well-drilled, and then the um, quality that we are showing on the counter-attack, even though we're missing a few chances, we're converting chances, I'm going to predict a win for Nigeria. I think Nigeria will knock Angola out of this tournament. If I say anything um, other than that, people are supposed to even vex for me. But I think that it's going to be a difficult game. But just like we saw against Cameroon, the Super Eagles will win. What do you think? I also think that you know Angola will be stubborn. Angola, the, you know Angola is one team that the Super Eagles find it very hard to beat. You know I can tell you because um, the records are there. We only we drawn five games to so tell you that, uh, and we've not like beat them in a very important game that we just take them out, take mm. them out of something. But they have did, they did that one to us twice. You know we drew in ninety nine against them. That one of the draws that stopped us from qualifying for the World Cup in 1990. We also, we also drew in the Kano. In fact, the, the last official game with Angola was in Kano in 2005. That was when mm. our Jamie 2006 World Cup dream died. <laughs> you know, and I'm pretty sure that JJ Okucha would tell the boys that, guys, this is the Angola team that stopped their dream. That they stopped the Okucha's dream of going to his last World Cup in 2006. Mm. But I think that uh, if Angola is coming with fire in their head. The fire, will, the fire will be quenched on Friday. I see the eagles using antelope for dinner. Mm. Eagles to win. All right. So both of us are on the same page with that one. The Super Eagles to win mm-hmm. against Angola. The next mm-hmm. match, we have DR Congo going up against Guinea. This one is also a, a game that I think is going to be a, a tough match, man. I think this one is going to be a difficult battle. I think both sides are going to fight hard to win this game. But for my prediction, I'm going to go with DR Congo. Even though they've not won any game in regulation time yet, I just believe that there's something about this DR Congo side that is going to lift them over Guinea. I think it's going to be a slim margin, probably 1-0, maybe even penalty shootout. You know, but I think DR Congo will eventually get the better of Guinea and will find themselves in the semi final of the Africa Cup of Nations 2023. What do you think about this one, Supply? You know, um, the battle between the leopards and the elephants. You know, I have to be honest with you. Um, based on the level of play, based on what we can see on the pitch. I think it's going to be insane for you to best to bet against the Dia Congo. I have to be honest with you. I like Kabadewara, the coach of Guinea. I like him from his playlist. I like him very much, but I'm sorry, boss. I'm sorry. Um the Johnny Hens here. Mm. The Johnny Hens here. I think um uh, Dia Congo will win, but um it might not be a very straight win. I just think like Dia Congo will win. Mm. So 
for these two, we're on the same page as well. They are Congo to defeat Guinea. Okay, going into the third match, we have Mali going up against Cote d'Ivoire. Hmm. For this one, you know, Ivory Coast, I think they've got a second wind all of a sudden now. Mm-hmm. You know, they are refreshed, they are remotivated, and I think they are going to win this game. I like Mali. You know, I like some of the players on their team. I think they've done a good job getting this far. But as Ivory Coast have, you know, come out of this group and have reinvigorated themselves and knocked out Senegal, I think that they are going to continue with that ginger. And I think they are going to have just about enough to beat Mali. I think it might be like a 2-1, but with the, host, um, with the crowd behind them, you know, with their players giving everything like the way they did against um, Senegal. You know, even though I thought they would go out, now I'm going to be on their side. And I will say that Ivory Coast will defeat Mali. What do you think about this one? You know, I was tempted to go for Mali, but looking at the way the whole thing actually played out, and the Mali is myself today against Burkina Faso, uh, you know, I don't like it, uh, but I have to agree with you on this, honestly, because um, I think um, Ivory Coast will be too much for Mali. You see, this is what it takes. We are the host nation. You're meant to be playing in one venue, but they're now dragging you about. They were oh. in Yamasukro before. Now they are going to Buage. Before, if they win, they go to San Pedro, you know? But, uh, <laughs> you know, it's like uh, you are the owner of the house. And now she's in here. Go and sleep here. Go and sleep here. Go and sleep here. Go and sleep here. They are the ones that cause this for themselves. Yeah. Well, well as, they are this, as they are going, they are taking their blankets. So I think that uh, they will take Buage too. Mm. Be Mali. But Mali. They, they, I think it's, they, it's going to be more comfortable for them than uh, the, the one against Senegal. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Okay, so we're in agreement for this one. And then in the final game of the quarterfinal, we have Kibredi, my shock surprise team, going mm-hmm. up against Smithlai's surprise team, South Africa. You mm-hmm. know, um, it's going to be a good battle. It's going to be a good battle. But I think for this one, I'm going to side with Smithlai surprise team. As much as I like, as much as I like Cape Verde, as much as they have fights, mm-hmm. you know, I watched South Africa play against Morocco. I, I just don't think Cape Verde will have enough to, to defeat South Africa. I do not expect South Africa to come this far, but now that they've come this far, I think they are going to advance to the semifinal, you know, and, and advance to face Nigeria in the semifinal. And that's what I'm praying for. I'm getting ahead of myself now. But mm-hmm. if my prediction for Nigeria and Gola goes right and South Africa win, I have no doubt that we'll beat South Africa. So yeah. <laughs> I, I think South Africa will qualify. I think they will defeat Cape Verde. I think it might be 2 0, you know. And if Cape Verde managed to score, maybe it will be 2 1. But South Africa are going to continue to, you know, go further in this tournament. And I'll give them the win over Cape Verde. What do you think, Supply? Hey, you know, um, the surprise team gives my surprise team, you know. What a coincidence! But, uh, right. Like I said it before, when you press me further about uh, South Africa, where would I think they will finish? I said it's going to be semi-finals, and um, I think they go up in the semi, and they probably win the third place game, but they will not go further than the semi-finals. It's going to be the semi. Mm. They're going to end it in the semi-finals. So I'm going to go with South Africa winning against Cape Verde. Cape Verde, I like them so much. They're the Blue Sharks. I like Bebe. Baby times two times four. It's free kick now stand. Now it go ahead. It's not be inside net. Now stand. They go <laughs> with the huge but I just think that Cape Verde they have points. You know, more and more they can they have swallow what they what more than what they can achieve. I think um, Cape Verde we 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 go many quarters. I I think South Africa will progress. Mm. Yeah, I think so as well. So for the first time in our prediction, right. we we've, we've agreed on everything. We have the same four predictions. So this one, <laughs> no matter what happens, we are going to finish with the same score. We're already 6-6. Six, six. We agreed on everything. So no matter what happens, yeah. we'll still be tied going yeah. into the semifinal matches. But, you know, this AFCON, like I said earlier, is giving everything that it's supposed to give. It is a fantastic yes. tournament. If you're not watching it, trust me, you are missing out, you know, even if you are working, if you can just manage to sneak to watch one or two matches, try to watch because you don't want to miss mm-hmm. on a historic tournament like this, you know, that is giving yeah. so much drama, so much entertainment. You know, for a tournament mm-hmm. that 
a lot of people in Europe always like to downplay. I hope they can now see why mm -hmm. we Africans love our tournament and why we rate it so highly because there's quality football, there's entertainment, there's drama. Fans are amazing as well. This is one of the first Afcons that you watch almost every match and the stadium is packed. You don't see empty mm -hmm. seats like that in the stadium like we've seen in some. I remember the last Afcon in Cameroon, there were many matches with empty, empty seats, but we're not having that yeah. in this tournament. People are actually yeah. showing up and showing out and the energy is there throughout the games. You know, fantastic tournament. Kudos to Ivory Coast for hosting. Kudos to them on their performance as well. And of course, we look forward to the quarterfinals that will be kicking off on February the 2nd, Friday, February the 2nd. The first game of the quarterfinal is Nigeria versus Angola. So Nigerians will know our fate early enough. And of course, as we know, if we manage to lose the banter on social media will be plenty from the Ghanaians and from the Cameroonians. But mm -hmm. by the grace of God, the Super Eagles will do a job and would advance to the semi-final and, you know, hopefully even go further than that. What's your final word regarding the round of 16 and the quarterfinals? Before yes, you know, there's no, there no Hollywood or Hollywood movie that you can compare to this thing I watch every day. I've not been to every single game. And anytime it's 5 o'clock in the UK time, UK time, I know that, oh, it's time for another excitement. Mm. So I'm really happy that um, this is happening and this is half one of my dream. So I'm happy and I can't wait for this action to continue on Friday. Even Seth, the Morocco one, let it be next month. So we can just be enjoying the whole thing they go. <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah, I'm very, very excited. Yeah. Mm. Amazing. So there you have it, guys. Another fantastic episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Whether you're watching on YouTube or you're listening um, across you know, whatever your favorite audio streaming platform is. As always, my name is IoT and my co-host is Smith Lai. Yes, this has been a Niger FC podcast. Bye-bye, guys. <laughs> <laughs>